What's up everybody, this is Master Ian Gamer. It's been a little while now since Overwatch 2 went live. Live, of course, with a little asterisk next to it. So I figure it's finally time for me to do my proper Overwatch 2 launch review video. Yes, I've admittedly been putting this video off just a little bit because somewhere deep down inside, I desperately hoped that Blizzard would be able to salvage some of the pieces of this Overwatch 2 launch and maybe not force me to be quite as critical as I'm going to end up being in this video, as you could probably deduce from the title alone. But lo and behold, we're coming up on a week now, and I think it's time for me to finally just admit my honest thoughts on Overwatch 2. And sadly, it's not going to be pretty. So let's jump right on in, and to start off, I would like to hone in on some of the things I think are genuinely good about Overwatch 2, namely the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay itself. When you're actually in a match in Overwatch Overwatch 2, the game feels phenomenal. The new engine makes everything run really, really smoothly, the visuals are fantastic, and at least for me personally, I've been finding that Overwatch 2 actually runs better on my PC than Overwatch 1. I have heard some conflicting reports regarding this, so I won't say that that's necessarily consistent with everyone's experience in Overwatch 2, but for me personally, the game runs really well, it feels really great, and the gameplay itself is just really, really fun. One particular aspect of the gameplay, which I'd really like to point out, is just the movement physics. As someone who plays a ton of Wrecking Ball, I can honestly say that Wrecking Ball feels a lot better in Overwatch 2 than he ever did in Overwatch 1. The momentum and movement of swinging and rolling around just feels so much more fluid. It feels like he's not getting interrupted by getting caught on random little pieces of geometry in the map anymore, and the character overall just feels a lot more fun to play because it feels like the engine and the map design design itself is better accommodating him than anything we ever had in the original. And speaking of heroes and maps, the new ones we've had added with Overwatch 2 are easily some of the best new things we're getting with the sequel. I've been having a blast playing both Kiriko and the Junker Queen, and I could honestly see each of those characters becoming some of my most played characters in their respective roles. They feel, at least for the most part, to be fairly well balanced at the moment, and just introduce such interesting gameplay loops and fun mechanics that I'm having a really great time I'm getting to play around with them. I'm sure Sojourn is also a lot of fun as well, but I personally can't play her for the life of me, so can't really comment on that front, but considering how many other people I've seen playing Sojourn, I'm willing to say she's just as fun in her own right. And with that note, having now covered everything which I think is genuinely phenomenally great about Overwatch 2, now let's move on to the cons. Overwatch 2 is a buggy, unfinished, terribly designed mess that prioritizes extracting every last penny from its player base over rebuilding goodwill in its community. The launch was catastrophic, Blizzard was clearly unprepared for the immense amount of players they'd be getting on day one, and the slow rate at which they actually began implementing fixes to these issues is honestly extremely disappointing. While some of this may be forgivable in terms of there being DDoS attacks on the day of the launch, which, you know, is something that Blizzard doesn't have a whole ton of control over, what there is no excuse for is the amount of missing progression many players ended up experiencing, especially those players who had merged some of their console accounts, and the fact that countless players were unable to gain access to many of the existing older heroes and forced to go through the first-time user experience, even though they've been playing since the launch of Overwatch 1, which is an issue that Blizzard themselves are solely responsible for. That has nothing to do with the DDoS attacks they suffered. That is Blizzard's own shortcomings blatantly on display. There is no reason that many players should have been missing that much of their own progression, cosmetics, and unlocked heroes for that length of time. And the fact that over the week following the launch of Overwatch 2, Blizzard has had to take down the servers for hours at a time on multiple occasions, and there are still people suffering connectivity issues and the inability to gain access to cosmetics they earned in Overwatch 1 or the new things they purchased through the Watchpoint pack is honestly nothing less than shameful. But moving past the launch day blues, let's talk about something which I think is going to be a more serious issue in the long run of things. Because not having a immediate access to all your heroes or past cosmetics is likely a temporary issue that Blizzard will have resolved eventually, but this next issue is one which I can only dream of Blizzard ever resolving at all, which is the abysmal state of cosmetics in Overwatch 2. 
Simply put, the debut of cosmetics in Overwatch 2 with the launch of the game was as pathetic as the launch itself. The prices are ludicrous, the selection is severely lacking, and the quality of the cosmetics we do have in-game are honestly a bit laughable at times. For starters, let's take a look at the prices. These skins are stupidly expensive. $20 for a legendary skin, an emote, a voice line, and a spray is a ridiculously steep price, even for Blizzard's own standards. And while many of these newer cosmetics can be unlocked using Overwatch 1 legacy credits, this is a currency which new Overwatch 2 players will not have access to and never will because there's no way of earning it in Overwatch 2. And even if you're a legacy Overwatch 1 player who has a decent number of credits left over, as time goes on, you're going to burn through these legacy credits as you continue to buy new cosmetics or new heroes as they come out, and eventually Eventually, the vast majority of us Legacy players are going to end up in the exact same boat as the new free-to-play Overwatch 2 players. We're going to be forced to spend a ton of real money in order to get any cosmetics whatsoever in Overwatch 2. And moving on to the selection of cosmetics introduced with the launch of Overwatch 2, it frankly baffles me just how little there is. Each of the three new heroes that were added got one legendary skin, divvied up into two color palette variants, one epic skin, and then several dull base level recolors. By comparison, in Overwatch 1, every new hero used to get two unique legendary skins, each with two color variants, thus adding a total of four different legendaries skins, two different epic skins, as well as a number of the dull recolors that are the baseline. Blizzard has just straight up cut the number of base skins for new heroes being added in half, and this lack of content isn't even restricted to just the skins each hero gets. Looking at emotes, highlight intros, sprays, voice lines, all of these different categories have fewer cosmetics present at the hero's launch than what we've historically seen for new heroes in Overwatch 1. And this is in spite of the fact that all three of these heroes have been in development for years alongside Overwatch 2. So why is it that after all of this amount of time leading up to the launch of the sequel, Blizzard can only manage to give us less than the bare minimum in terms of what we would expect for a new hero? Is it because a lot of those skins and other cosmetics are going to end up being exclusive to the cosmetics shop and thus won't be purchasable with our legacy credits and thus force us to buy Overwatch coins? We don't know the answer just yet, but I'm sure we're going to find out. But the last thing that's important to touch on here when it comes to the cosmetics presented in the debut of Overwatch 2 is the quality. Overwatch historically has had some of the best quality skins and other cosmetics across the entire gaming landscape. We know for a fact that Overwatch has an incredibly talented art team and that they're capable of putting out some truly phenomenal cosmetic items, but we simply do not see that on display here with the launch of Overwatch 2. Looking at the Junker Queen and Kiriko specifically, the legendary skins on selection for these two heroes are, once again, incredibly lackluster. Starting with the Junker Queen, these are her two legendary skins. And this is her default skin. Can you spot 20 differences between these two images? Because I can't. Now, I understand that the legendary skin we see here is technically the one from her animated short, and that's essentially what justifies it being unique, but in terms of the actual design of the skin itself, it's literally just a reimagining of her default skin. It's as if Blizzard just tasked two separate concept artists to come up with an idea for a Mad Max post-apocalyptic Junker Queen, took both those concepts, made one of them the default skin, and the other one her legendary skin. It doesn't even thematic change the outfit. They're both just wastelander post-apocalyptic queens. And the thing is, I wouldn't even really have an issue with this, since I do actually prefer the legendary skin version over her default, but the fact that this is her base legendary skin, and her only base legendary skin on top of that, not counting the palette swap version of it, is what really irks me in terms of Blizzard trying to push this as a full-price legendary skin. 
And Kiriko, let's take a look at her. The one base legendary skin she has in game is quite literally identical to her default skin, save for replacing her skirt thing with a jacket. That's right, the pants are the same, the shoes are the same, the gloves are the same, and even her weapons and ability items are identical. The only difference between Kiriko's base hero design and her current in-game base legendary skin is the jacket. And once again, just like the Junker Queen skin, Blizzard is charging full legendary skin price for this. Disgusting. Sojourn, at the very least, seems to have gotten a proper base set of legendary skins right here. The two old-school Overwatch organization skins she has are both really, really good and do a great job of changing up her visuals, so can't really complain about this one. These are good skins. I'll give it to Blizzard on this one. All in all, I have been blown away by how terrible the debut of Overwatch 2 has been in terms of just the cosmetics on display. This is the launch of Overwatch 2, the highly anticipated sequel that people have been looking forward to for three years. Not only do you hit us with a disappointingly low amount of new content, being only three new hero editions and six new maps, but then for those three new heroes, you barely give us any worthwhile cosmetics at the launch of the game. For the first week of Overwatch's existence, there is nothing to get excited for here in the cosmetics department. Maybe you happen to like one of these skins enough to buy it. Okay, cool. But consider Considering all the other negativity that Blizzard has been suffering leading up to this launch, and certainly after the launch as well with all the connectivity issues and whatnot, did Blizzard not consider it might be a good idea to give players something a bit more exciting in the game itself in the cosmetics department? Like really? Blizzard, we know your art team is a lot better than this. Give us the actually good skins and cosmetics. Now again, I'm sure come the first week anniversary of Overwatch 2, we're going to see the item shop start to get updated with those actually interesting cosmetic items, such as the cyberpunk skins, which we've had teased a few times already, but we have yet to see their actual implementation. At the time of me recording this, we are still in the first week of the Overwatch 2 launch, and thus haven't seen the Overwatch 2 shop actually update yet, but I have very low hopes for the price of these upcoming skins, and I'm sure if these base legendaries are anything to go by, we're gonna see some pretty prohibitive prices on the skins coming up. Having railed sufficiently on skins and cosmetics in general at this point, now let's move on to some of the aspects of Overwatch 2, which make it feel legitimately unfinished. And the first one I'd like to hone in on is one which I haven't seen too many people talk about, but is definitely something that stuck out to me, and that's the really low quality and sloppy visuals we tend to see with a lot of the new stuff added. Specifically, I'd like to focus in on the new default highlight intros every hero has ended up getting. These are the animations which you see play every time you select a hero on the hero select screen. And while some of these are pretty good, like Soldier 76's looks fine, and Symmetra's has the cool implementation of her teleporter and everything, but a lot of other ones look horrifically amateur. The two which stick out to me as being most egregious in this department are Reinhardt's and Zarya's. Both of these look so slapped together, so pathetically underwhelming in terms of what they actually show for the hero, both feature the character just walking forward a little bit and standing there. Wow, uh, so exciting. You don't see their weapons, you don't see their abilities, it's just, hello, I'm Reinhardt, or I'm Zarya. I'm here. I really hate that Blizzard went from these far more personalized intros we saw in Overwatch 1 for Reinhardt and Zarya, where you get to actually see their weapon and them take on a bit more of a unique pose as opposed to just stand with hands on hips. Because in all honesty, these new ones really look like they came straight out of a mobile game. I'm not even joking about this. A lot of these new default highlight intros legitimately look like something from a mobile game. The animations are stiff, they don't have that sustained 
succinct punch to their movements, and the overall movements and motion in a lot of these are just blatantly inferior to their Overwatch 1 counterparts. Doomfist in particular is the character who really sticks out as being bad in this regard, because his Overwatch 1 default highlight intro was this very tough, powerful stance where he's showing his gauntlet front and center while looking across it at the player to show you his strength, which is the gauntlet. But then in Overwatch 2, we see him just twitch his knuckles and then stare at the player. Like, what? This looks awful. It doesn't help that clearly these were designed without taking into consideration many of his skins, as the Doomfist skin we get in the Founders pack completely obscures his eyes as he's staring at the player. Like, what? This is now his default pose on the Hero Select screen, and you can't even see his eyes because of a specific skin you're using. Once again, it blows my mind how poorly designed this is. Honestly, the overall impression I get from just looking through these new default highlight intros is that Blizzard just randomly tasked a bunch of animators of wildly varying skill levels to just do new default highlight intros for the existing heroes without giving any sort of overhead had direction to the people working on these. Some of these highlight intros are excessively long, others are excessively boring and lackluster without showing any fine details of the hero themselves, and others are actually quite good. But the one big issue across the board with these is how terribly inconsistent they are. And overall, the one question I have in response to this is, why did they even bother doing this at all? Was anybody asking for Blizzard to update the default highlight intros of each of these heroes? Was this a decision? decision that anyone felt was necessary in terms of the time and effort it must have taken to actually implement it? And was it really necessary to flat out remove the original highlight intros entirely? You couldn't have at least given players the option of going with either the Overwatch 1 or Overwatch 2 versions. If that had been the case, then I would have no issues with the new ones because you just don't have to select them. Have the old heroes act the way they've always acted for six plus years and just be fine with it. But no, now players who only have the default highlight intro unlocked are gonna have to look at these bland, newer versions, many of which are just flat out inferior to the old ones. And this is just one of the large-scale sloppy visual implementations we're seeing. There are countless little visual errors throughout the game, such as the abysmal anti-aliasing on the character profiles seen on the endorsement screen. Like, what? Did somebody just literally hand crop these out from a JPEG? Why is there that much of a white pixel line along the edge? This looks awful. Not to mention the clunky, broken UI we see scattered all over the place, such as the player outline slider I discovered in the replay system, which cannot be clicked on and dragged whatsoever, and instead you have to find that specific single pixel over the number itself, which lets you select the number box and type in a value, as opposed to just moving the slider. And these are just ones I discovered on my own within the first day of playing the game. Go on Reddit or the forums or Twitter and you'll find people talking about countless little issues like these that are riddling the entirety of Overwatch 2. The number of bizarre and terrible little broken elements like this is absurd, and is a blatant showcase of just how unfinished and unpolished this game really is. And in a similar vein, here's a quick list of a number of things which were intentionally removed from Overwatch 2, despite being implemented and appreciated in Overwatch 1. The in-match on-fire system, which no longer has any visual indicator, but the heroes themselves still claim to be on fire? Is this intentional? I don't actually know. Leveling up aside from the battle pass has been removed entirely. Now you get no sense of satisfying progression whatsoever other than that slow grind to get new cosmetics from the battle pass. Or I guess if you play competitive, you can look to level up your rank. End cards have been removed, thus removing yet another validating element that used to make you really satisfied when you'd see that you did really well in the recent match you just played, now match is just end as if they're meaningless. Looking for group has been arbitrarily removed, despite countless people using it pretty regularly to group up and get bonus XP through playing the game and maybe, if you're lucky, even meet new friends. And finally, being able to gift Overwatch coins to your friends. That's right, as much as Blizzard would like for you to spend exorbitant amounts of money in the game itself buying cosmetic items, for whatever reason they don't want you buying things for your friends. Why is this not a feature anymore?
So in conclusion, as much as I have historically loved Overwatch and enjoyed the game to death and back, Blizzard has honestly pushed the game and the community and me personally to the point where I am legitimately disappointed in the product they have given us. In conjunction with all the other issues Blizzard as a company has historically dealt with, and even the other Overwatch 2 specific issues, such as heroes being locked in the battle pass, Blizzard really, really needed a win with the launch of Overwatch 2. They desperately needed to win back good faith with the player base and to incentivize people to get excited about actually playing the game, but instead, it looks like all we got was a buggy, clearly unfinished product with egregious monetization implemented into it, which is currently just barely being propped up by some actually good gameplay and mechanics in the game itself that on their own would be great and fantastic and I would love to talk positively about until the end of the day, but even those aspects are unfortunately being hampered by all the other issues presented to us in this sequel. If Blizzard doesn't jump on this ASAP and turn the game around in a direction that the player base is actually more inclined to enjoy, then I fear that this is only the tip of the iceberg in terms of Overwatch as a franchise undergoing a severe decline. This first week for the game may have been abysmal, but I do still think it's possible for Blizzard to pull it back. As I said, the gameplay itself, the moment-to-moment -moment action when you're in a match, feels great. I'm so glad that we at least have that, the gameplay of the game itself, which at the end of the day is the most important thing, still feels good. And because of that, I think it is possible for Blizzard to bring this game back from the brink, but it is going to be extremely difficult and require some extreme changes on Blizzard's part. We've already seen them take a couple steps in the right direction, with them making changes to the phone restrictions, which originally prohibited a number of original Overwatch players from being able to play Overwatch 2, but they need to keep doing more. They need to find a way to compensate for this abysmal first week where countless people took days off of work, took days off of school, in order to enjoy playing Overwatch 2 on the day it launched, only to be stuck in queues for hours upon hours. Blizzard needs to find a way to make it up to those players, or they are seriously going to lose those players forever. I can only imagine how many players they've already lost permanently just based off of this first week and the abysmal launch of the sequel, which means Blizzard needs to focus everything on getting those players back, incentivizing people to actually play the game and actually spend money in a good way by having reasonable prices for the cosmetics in the shop and maybe even giving us a few more rewards for actually playing the game itself as opposed to just having to pay outright for anything. And they they need to jump on doing this ASAP. Because if they don't, there are plenty of other examples in the history of gaming where a company getting too greedy and too lazy with the development of their products has led to the company tanking. And while that may or may not end up happening with Blizzard, since they do of course have other IPs, the Overwatch franchise is currently in a state of crisis. And if they can't pull it back, it's only going to get worse from here. So at this point, I'm not willing to call the game dead yet. I still think it is quite far from that point. And there are still a lot of things I enjoy about the game, but Blizzard really, really needs to reevaluate the direction they're headed. And that does it for my review of the launch of Overwatch 2. I really, really didn't want for it to have to be this critical, but sometimes you're forced to be critical because that's just the way it is. I'm not someone who's willing to just lie about the way I see things in order to, you know, give a positive spin on something when I don't genuinely think there is a positive spin to be given. So at the very least, I hope you've appreciated my honest thoughts on the content we've gotten and the overall state of Overwatch 2 at this point. I definitely I'd love to hear your thoughts on all this down in the comments below. I can only imagine there's going to be quite a bit of bitterness from players who haven't really had a great experience thus far. But nonetheless, I would love to hear any and all comments you have down below. And otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, hit up that bell icon, and come join my Discord server to hang out and never miss any future Overwatch 2 news, updates, and content. And special thanks to my YouTube channel members who help make these videos possible. If you'd like to join them to earn some cool rewards, then just hit that join button down below. And otherwise, this is Master Ian Gamer signing off, and until next time, have a great day.